Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a really easy, flat shaker card. I have a playlist. I will link to it in the end screen at the end of this video of dozens of videos I've done over the last however many years making flat shaker cards. They're super fun. It's been a while since I've done one. So I decided to do one. I was inspired by Bling. I'm using products from Simon Says Stamps latest release. The, is it Sunny? What is it called? Sunny Vibes release. It's their June 2024 release. Um, I'll have a link to the release because there's, there's tons. There's tons. I barely even touched on what, you know, what I used in this video. But I'll have a link to the release and all of the things. This is also part of a blog hop to celebrate the release. I'll have a link to my blog post. Generally, any of the info you want to know, it's in the description box below the video. I'll have a link to all the supplies as well. My links are affiliate links. That just means that if you click on one of my links, end up placing an order, I get a little kickback from that at no extra cost to you. And that is what helps pay the bills and keeps the channel going. And yeah, that's enough chatter from me. Let's get into making this card. So I'm using the crochet blocks stencil it's just a, a basic little stencil and i don't know i really loved the the pattern of it so i took a piece of um smooth white cardstock and i stuck it to one of my grip mats and then stuck the stencil on top of it so the mat is holding the cardstock and the stencil and then to um do my blending i'm using a blending brush and i'm going to use three different shades of positively saturated ink and I was inspired by one of the new um, packs of bling in this release. So that's what it kind of dictated my colors because it was like pinks and purples. And I was like, ooh, I like, I like, who doesn't like pinks and purples? So I'm using the darkest shades of three different positively saturated ink trios. So that first shade was rose. I blended that on. And then I'm going in with amethyst because I want these, like the actual stencil pattern, I want it to be dark because I'm going to do ink blending um, over it. You could also do the ink blending first and then stencil over it. It's kind of whatever floats your boat, however you want to do things. But I decided to do the stenciling first. And then the third shade is iris. So blended that onto um, this background. Remove the stencil. It's not just as is it's just pretty it's just pretty so i've talked about this a lot i'll keep talking about it when it comes to grip mats you just clean them like you would clean your photopolymer stamps so generally i just wipe it with a baby wipe and i'm good to go but photopolymer safe cleaner like stamp cleaner works on them too for stencils depending on what i'm doing I will, if I'm using a lot of stencils, I'll like rinse them in the sink. But with something like this, where I'm actually going to use a stencil again on the inside of the card, I wanted to clean it quickly. I just spray it with alcohol. I have like a bottle of isopropyl alcohol and I spray it, wipe it off. It's good. Do not use alcohol on your stamps or on your grip mats. You do not want to do that. It can ruin them. So I only use alcohol to like clean off my work surface and things like stencils. It's fine for that. So clean off my stencil and I'll revisit it again later. I also used um, like a microfiber cloth to clean off the stencil. And then I also, I always have a microfiber cloth on hand. I use that to, um, I say clean, I use that loosely, <laughs> my blending brushes because I don't wash my blending brushes either. But I, I rubbed my brushes really well in the microfiber cloth since I had used such a dark color, like dark shades first. And now I've switched to the lightest shades of those trios. So I wanted to be able to do that without having to clean my brushes. So I just rub them on the cloth and then we're good to go. So this time I'm using, like I said, the lightest shades. So I used uh, Carnation and then I used Lilac. And then this last one is Heather. And I also did it like a lighter hand while I was blending this because obviously I want the, the stenciled pattern to really show up. Another thing that you could do is like blend a background and then use that stencil and then just use like a glitter paste. Oh, that would look really good. I'm just, the amount of ideas that just keep popping in my head as I'm just doing voiceovers. <laughs> anyway, after I did my little bit of blending, I'm going to add a bit of splatter. You can't really see this in like the photos or the video, but in real life, you can see it. It just gives it that little extra something. So I'm using my uh, Picket Fence liquid watercolor in 
our paper splatter watercolor in liquid white snowflake. It's just shimmery and fabulous. So I put that on my little palette, used my fan brush, had the background in my splat box, splattered the background, let that dry, which only took a couple minutes. And then I decided to trim my background down just a bit. Um, you could leave it like full size, like to completely cover a card front, but I decided to trim it down. And then to make this flat shaker, you need um, some form of like acetate. I have shown in many of my videos and they'll be in that playlist, they'll link at the end. I save a lot of like the packaging of things, that sort of stuff. It works great. Like made many, many, many flat shakers doing that. You can also, if you don't have like extra packaging, you can get little uh, packs of these like clear bags. That's what I used here. And I'll have a link to them in the supplies. And the nice thing about those is I can generally get four shaker fronts from just one of those. So one pack goes goes a long way. So I trimmed down my, my acetate. And then to adhere it to the back of the, the panel, you want a, a strong adhesive. I do not use liquid adhesive for something like this because you would have to sit there and like hold it down for it to dry. And even then I wouldn't I wouldn't trust it. So I like to use like, I'm using Simon's Terrific Tape for this. Red line tape will work, score tape, like any of those like really strong uh, dry adhesives work really well. So you just apply it around the, the edges of the back of this panel. And then I just fold over the, the acetate and press it in and you seal up three sides like I showed. This fourth side, I'm just going to put the um, adhesive in place, but I'm not going to adhere the fourth side yet because you need that opening to add your shaker bits. And I'm using the Summer Blooms embellishment mix. That's what inspired the colors. So I just dumped some in there. And then once I was happy with it, I'm going to then flip this over, peel off the backing, and then seal up the, the final side to make my flat shaker. And if you've never made a flat shaker before, highly recommend it. I love them. I haven't, like I said, I haven't made one in a really long time, but I love them. They're fun. You don't have to fiddle around with foam tape. They're a little easier to mail because they're a lot thinner. The only thing is, is you, it's not as um, shakery <laughs> as a regular, you know, shaker, but it's fun. And then what I was doing there was I was just trimming off the bits from folding over the acetate. They'll kind of hang over the edge. So I just trim those off with my scissors and then my shaker is good to go. So for my sentiments, I'm using the new Create stamp set and the big Create word from it. And I've got my Misty here and I have some pink cardstock that I used my anti-static powder tool on because I'm going to heat emboss this, uh, both of these sentiments. So I use my anti-static powder. That just keeps the embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped image. And then I stamp the sentiment multiple times with clear embossing ink, because especially with like large sentiments or very solid images, things like that, um, a lot of times I'll stamp them multiple times to make sure I get a full, like solid stamped um, impression. So I stamped that with clear embossing ink and then I coated it with Simon's uh, Detail White embossing powder. And I'm gonna melt that with my heat tool. And I'm going to repeat the process with the little um, like sub sentiment on just a piece of purple cardstock. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Get the sentiment on there, use my anti-static powder tool, and then I'm going to stamp the sentiment um, a couple times using very light, very light pressure, because especially anything like fine lined or small sentiments, if you're pressing too hard, that's where you'll lose all the detail. You'll see it when you go to pour the embossing powder on, or if you're just stamping with like regular ink. If you've lost all the detail, more often than not, it's because you're using too much pressure. So I would rather use light pressure and stamp multiple times than like, you don't need to do CPR on it is what I'm saying. So after I'd melted the sentiments, I used the cloth again to remove that excess anti-static powder on the cardstock. And then I used the coordinating wafer dies to die cut both of these sentiments. And I'm just taping the dies in place so that they don't shift when I run them through my die cut machine. So the coordinating die set even like it die cuts all the sentiments. Love it. Love it. So die cut those, set them aside. And then my card base, it's a top folding A2 white note card. So I stuck that to my grip mat. I took a piece of post-it tape and just um, stuck that right where the score line is so that I don't get any ink past the score line. And then I put the stencil back in place. And this was why I cleaned off the stencil because I, rather than just use 
the the residual ink that I've sh like I show that in a ton of videos. I wanted to use the lighter shades of ink here since this is going on the inside of the card. So I don't want it to be as bright and vibrant because you want to be able to write over it. So I used the carnation, the lilac, and the heather inks. Those were the ones I did the, the blending on for the front of the card. So now I'm using them for the stenciling on the inside of the card. And again, just using a lighter pressure as well with my brushes so that it's not, um, you know, super saturated or anything like that. Because while it's going to be a little bit busy of an inside with the, the pattern and everything, it's still, you know, easy to write on top of and be able, be able to actually read what I wrote. So blended that. And then I've got that pattern again. I just, I don't know. It's such a cute pattern. I love it. So blended that onto the inside and then put the inside into my Misty. So I could stamp a couple more sentiments from that create stamp set. And the sentiments I'm going to stamp with the darker shades of ink. So they, you know, stand out a bit. So I'm going to stamp the, the first part with the rose ink. And then the second part I'm going to stamp with um, the iris ink. And that one I'm going to, again, just stamp it with lighter pressure and just ink it up and stamp it more than once. So that I actually get, you know, all the detail and whatnot without smushing it and end up making it look like a blob. Ask me how I've, you know, figured that out after all these years. <laughs> so stamp that on the inside. And then to adhere the flat shaker to the card base, I went backwards because I wasn't going to do this. So what I would do is I would apply the um, terrific tape around the perimeter first, then the liquid adhesive because that would make more sense. But my brain just kind of stopped. And so I put the liquid adhesive and then I was like, wait a minute, you need to put the, the tape on. So I did just, just had to be a little more careful about it. So I got the adhesive on the back of this and then press this into the card base. And then to adhere the sentiments to the front of the shaker, I'm using just thin foam squares. So that'll, you know, pop them up, give them a, a little bit of dimension and also just adhere them really well because foam squares stick really nicely to things like acetate. Whereas again, like I was saying, uh, liquid adhesive, not the best. I'll use it when I have to, like when there's not really any other options. But I try to avoid using liquid adhesive with things like this because it just does not want to stick in the end. So got the, the little foam squares and whatnot and even trimmed them down to fit these tiny, like this tiny little narrow sentiment. And then adhered that into place and that finished off this card. Like super simple, really fun, love the colors. And yeah, it's, it's, it's shakery, you know, flat shakers, like I said, they don't shake as much, but they're still fun. So like I mentioned in the intro, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. And at the end of the video in the end screen, I'll link to my flat shaker playlist. So you can check that out if you're interested for tons of other ideas. And then my blog post, the link to the release, supplies, all that stuff that will be directly below the video for those that are interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my video, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.